What's going on YouTube? This white page has made me the happiest person today. And let me tell you why. Let me tell you the journey it took for me just to get Windows 10 and Docker to run in the way I wanted to run. So let me just kind of give you an overlay on how I develop. So I usually develop multiple websites in parallel. Uh, mostly because sometimes I gotta do a, a quick change on one website or while working on a big project on another site. So being able to run multiple web containers at the same time is very beneficial for me. It makes my work process a lot more efficient versus having to stop a container, start another container just to do one little edit and then you know stop and start up the other container that I was working on before for a bigger project. So let me tell you why I had to go through such a journey, okay? For Docker for Windows has a serious bug when it comes to working with Linux containers. One, Docker for Windows cannot route traffic to Linux container. However, you can ping Windows container. This is a serious issue because I'm running web applications. My web application runs on Linux servers. So I'm not going to create Windows containers just to run Linux, I mean, just to run web ap applications. And their quote unquote workaround is to publish the, those containers. And the issue is that I want most of my container needs to run on port 80. I can have one on 80 and the other one on 80, 80, 80, 80, or 8888, whatever. So this is, this is why China publishes those containers not a good thing for me or it doesn't work for me i mean if it was like a web application container a memcache container and a database container that'd be a different story then yeah i could publish those because all those application runs on different ports anyways but when i want to have my web applications to run on 80 or on both of them this is where it's an issue in a normal linux host environment what you would do is that you will um, create host entries so you'll map the domain to the IP address of the Linux container which you can't do that in Windows because of the said issue that I pointed out earlier so what I needed to do is instead of getting rid of Windows and reinstalling Linux onto this box what I need to do is be able to create a Linux environment a full-fledged Linux environment where I can have Docker running on it. So what I ended up doing was using my good old trusty VirtualBox and with the VirtualBox I created my Linux virtual environment and then installed Docker on there. And from there I use Squid to be able to receive connection from my Windows host and be able to route the traffic correctly to the um, Docker containers. And the way that this works is that inside of, do I have it up still? No, I do not have it up. Uh, let me bring it up. So inside of the virtual host, I have a host entry file, which actually map the host of each of the containers to their IP address. So for example, dev.inhabitat.com, that domain is mapped to the container with this IP address, which is dot four basically. So that way, whenever the Squid server receives a request saying, hey, I need to get to dev.inhabitat.com, it knows how to get to that um, container correctly. And I'm pretty sure there's some other better ways to set this up. Uh, I'm still researching that and seeing if there is a better setup that I could work with. So that's how I could get one, that's my one setup. So that way, whenever I do go to devinhabitat.com, I actually could get to the correct container. Now the second part of, of this issue was actually set it up, the ability to dynamically edit the code. Um, I used volumes, obviously, so that I'd be able to run the container and modify the code whenever I need to. So what I had to do was that on the virtual host, I created a Samba share and what the Samba share allows me to do is that I'm able to have my windows to mount that Samba share onto the Windows server 
Let me tell sorry, I don't want no holes. And on my IDE, I'm able to use that network sh share drive to edit the code. Yeah, it's a little crazy, but it works. So that way, I can edit the code here on my Windows. And what happened is that it will update the Samba, it was it will update through the Samba to the on the Linux host to make replicate the same change. And uh, since the Docker has that folder, wow, I think I'm like overcomplicating it. Am I? I'm just say that it works magically, okay? But basically, because we're updating it through a shared location. All whoever's sharing that same location gets the update automatically. Magic, okay? Yeah, that's the best way of describing it. Magic. And now by adding in that file, fixing that quote unquote error, I get the website to load up correctly, even though it may take like 10 years to load up because uh whatever, cache expired and stuff like that. So I have to re refresh stuff off from the database again. And yeah, that is the journey that I went through to get this thing set up. It took me quite a few days just to get this thing working, trying to figure out how to. It's kind of sad that the solution that's supposed to work, which is using the Docker for Windows, doesn't work the way it's supposed to work. And so some notes on for those they may try in the future is that if you have Hyper-V enabled because you're using that Docker for Windows thing. You're going to have to disable it because Oracle VirtualBox doesn't like it. Yeah, so it is. So when you were trying to run Docker for Windows, you had to enable this Hyper-V. When you want to run VirtualBox, you need that disabled. And it will tell you VirtualBox will no longer works if you have that enabled. All right. So that, with that way, you need to disable it. Um, and that way you get your, your virtual, virtual box to run correctly. And then from there, you just pretty much, you're just using good old fashioned setup, the good old crazy convoluted running a VM within a VM setup. The one where it's like so efficient that it makes you think like, why didn't I think about this sooner? The most inefficient set setup ever. I don't know how I make up, you know, rag on it anymore that I can that I already did. But yeah, now I have a working website. Basically, that's in the end. And thank you for watching this video. If you want me to go in more detailed steps on how I actually got this whole crazy installation set up, let me know in the comments. Outside of that, I hope you have a pretty nice day. Peace.